Imagine if you woke up one day and your Firebase bill went from zero to 30,000 US dollars. Well, that's exactly what happened to a startup in Colombia that scaled up to about 2 million daily active users. They really just made one seemingly minor mistake, and with this video I want to show you how we can take their $30,000 bill and reduce it down to about 25 bucks. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can grab the source code for this project at angularfirebase.com. So you may have already seen this article because it kind of went viral last week on Hacker Noon, but the source of this high bill was because they managed to make over 40 billion requests to Firestore in less than 48 hours. So how is that even possible when you only have 2 million users? That means every user would have to make about 20,000 document reads. The mistake they made is that they needed to calculate the total for every crowdfunding campaign, but they were doing this by reading every single document in a collection for every user on the site. So as they got more users and more payments, the problem just compounded to result in a shitload of document reads. Not only is that super expensive, but it also results in a lot of latency on the client, and that's actually how they discovered the problem in the first place. And I should also point out that this type of mistake is very common, and you really won't notice it until you start scaling up in users and you run into these problems with billing and performance. I'm going to show you how to avoid this with strategies both client side and server side, but the number one thing you should do right off the bat is set up a billing alert on Google Cloud Platform. Every Firebase project is tied to a GCP project, so you just have to go into the billing panel and then set up the billing thresholds that you want to be alerted on. So that way you can find out early if you have some kind of issue that's resulting in billing spikes. But that doesn't really solve the problem at hand because the problem is in the code. So I set up a demo here that does something similar. Basically, it calculates the total amount of donations, the average amount of each donation, and this is all based on a Firestore collection. But I have this app super poorly optimized where I'm reading every document in the collection three separate times, one for the total, one for the average, and then one to show the list of donations. So if this collection has 100 documents in it, it will take 300 document reads to present the UI that you see on the left. Believe it or not, this is pretty easy to do, and it still performs great at this level, so you really wouldn't notice an issue at this point. The startup in the article was using Angular, so we'll be doing the same here. We'll be using Firestore with Angular Fire 2, and then I'm importing Faker so I can generate some fake data for the UI. Now, the first thing I want to show you is how we can optimize things client-side, and I think that's really where you should focus first. So we have three different observables here, one for the donations, one for the total amount, and one for the average amount. So the mistake that I'm making here first is that I'm creating a separate observable for the same collection to show all three of these different amounts. That means that we're going to subscribe to three different observables, fire off three separate read operations to Firestore, even though they all depend on the same source data. I'm not really going to explain this code in detail, but basically what we're doing is taking the Firestore collection, which is an array, and then we reduce it down to the total amount of all of the donations in that collection. And then we do the same thing for the average with just a slightly different calculation. And then we subscribe to all three of these observables in the HTML using the async pipe. So the main problem here is that we have three different data sources that are being created, even though we could really get this all done with a single data source. So let's take a look at how we might use RxJS to reduce our document reads down from about 300 to 100. What we want to do is have one observable that can be shared with the other observables that make the calculation for the total and the average. So what I'm going to do first is pipe in the tap operator so we can see when a subscription is created to this observable. Then we'll also console log the number of documents to get an approximate amount of the reads that were executed. So now instead of having the total and the average create their own observables, we'll just go ahead and use the donations observable that we created above. So let's take a look and see if that actually solved the problem in the UI. We should only get one console log, but if we look closely here, we're still getting three side effects, which should mean that we're sending off three sets of reads to Firestore. Luckily, there's an easy way to fix this with RxJS, and that's just by piping in the share replay operator, which will make this a hot observable, and allow any other subscribers to always get the last cached value. So now we can be 100% confident that our code is only sending off one document read to the back end. So that can be a super useful technique, and you can also use an Angular service to inject the same data source into multiple components. But the actual problem that was faced by the startup is that we need all of the information from every document in that collection, 
And to do that client side means that we would have to read every single document every time, which is just not feasible. But we can implement a server side solution to make this way more efficient, and we can do it with Firebase Cloud functions. An app like this is very heavy on document reads, but very light on document writes. For example, we might have a hundred people visit the page, but only one of those people actually make a donation and write something to the database. One of the main reasons that NoSQL databases like Firestore are so popular is that we have the flexibility to optimize for read performance. What we're going to do next is set up a cloud function that listens to the donation collection, and every time a new document is written there, it will update an aggregated document that contains the total count, the total amount, and also the last five donations that were left. So this means we could have a million documents in our donations collection and have all the information needed for the front end UI with a single document read. The actual data payload will now be much smaller, so our front end UI is going to be way more performant for 99% of users. And basically what we're doing is trading 20,000 client side document reads for an extra write and an extra cloud function invocation. In this case, that's an excellent trade-off, and it'll make the pricing go from 30K down to pretty close to the free tier. One of the drawbacks is that it makes writes to the UI a little bit slower because we have to wait for that cloud function to finish before the document is updated. But in this case, it makes a ton of sense because the vast majority of users are reading data and not changing it. I have initialized Firebase cloud functions in this project, and I'm also using the new node 8 runtime, which allows me to use async await in just a plain JavaScript function. We'll bring in the admin database, and then we'll want to listen to every new donation document that is created in that Firestore collection. When a new document is created, we'll just want to update the aggregated data for that collection. So we're no longer displaying the actual donation documents, but instead we're displaying the aggregated document based on that collection. There is no best practice for this, but generally what I do is I save a document in a collection called aggregation, and the ID for that document matches the collection that we're making calculations on. And you really just want to save the bare minimum amount of information you need to make calculations in the UI. In our case, we just need to show the average and the total. So we can calculate these by taking the current aggregated total and then add it to the amount of the new donation, and then we can take the total count and just add one to it. And then we'll also save the last five donations so we can show those in the view as well. By saving the last five donations here, we can show those in the view and we'll only have to execute one document read instead of five, which can make a pretty big difference if you have two million users. And then we'll complete our function by just returning a set operation from it and we're good to go. Our front end UI looks exactly like it did before, but instead we're just doing a single document read instead of say 20,000. The nice thing about Firestore is that it's easy to anticipate your pricing. Let's imagine that every user reads about 10 documents per visit. That would be about 20 million document reads per 2 million users, or about $25 per 2 million sessions, or a savings of about 99.9% .9 from the startup's initial query setup. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn how to get a quality app shipped to production, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book, access to my courses, and a whole bunch of other free stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.